and welcome to today's top leaders. I am coming to you from my daughter's clubhouse. Yes, this is actually inside of her bedroom. This is her adorable little clubhouse that we set up for her so that she has sacred little place. And as I was thinking about this in relation to being a great leader, I think every good leader needs to have their own clubhouse as well, their own little spot where they can go to to get away from all the pressures. And so as I'm sharing with you some thoughts today about what I call the clubhouse rules for leadership, I want you to just remember and ask and, and just keep this in mind. If you are feeling like you are needing some coaching and training to be the best leader, then please get in touch with me. Just send me a message and let's schedule a time to talk and talk about what it can take for you so that you can level up and become that tech leader that everyone wants to work for. So let's jump into it, shall we? Shall we get into the clubhouse rules, right? Okay, so first of all, first, you know, and you might remember when we were kids how we had clubhouses and we had like rules, right? Like certain people were allowed in or not allowed in, right? And so like I remember as a kid, my brother and I with our bunk bed, we made a clubhouse and we didn't let any parents in our clubhouse. It was only kids allowed. And so we had this little thing set up in there and it was a blast. And so same thing for you. Like what are some of those rules for you? So the first rule I want to get into as a leader to help you is that you want to make sure that first of all, do you even have a clubhouse, right? Have you even established a spot for yourself? And so I would encourage you to figure that out. And for some of us, we do not have the luxury of having an oversized cardboard box in our house where we can put our cute stuff in it and decorate it with fun colors and all this stuff. However, could you possibly have a spot in your life where maybe you could have a dedicated place for yourself. So, um, you know, maybe you're like, I really have nowhere in the house. I literally do not have a corner. I can go. Everything is taken up by other stuff. Okay. Well, maybe your clubhouse becomes the bathroom, right? Or maybe the clubhouse is your bedroom. Maybe you've got a little spot in the bedroom or something. Um, or maybe your clubhouse is just leaving the house and going for a walk and just having that quiet alone time. And so that's the second thing I want you to consider when it comes to the clubhouse rules is that it doesn't have to actually have to actually be a geographic place, right? With like a sign on the door that says the clubhouse. I mean, this is adorable. Let's, let's, you know, call it what it is. But maybe you just need to maybe change the time of day when you need some alone time. One thing for my husband and I is that we have really come to find that we need to have quiet alone time in the morning. And so we um, get up early so we can make that time for ourselves. And in essence, it becomes our clubhouse of sorts. We go to different spots in the house and, um, and we have that ability to have that quiet time just for us individually. And we can start our day with a really nice morning routine. For me, that um, includes prayer and meditation and pondering and scripture study and things like that. But for you, like you may have different things that are going to help you. And so what, maybe that's something you need to decide. And um, I can certainly help you with that from a coaching standpoint to figure out when is going to be that routine for you, where is going to be your clubhouse and what are you going to be doing? when you're um, in that quiet time. So in the third thing I wanted to tell you on the clubhouse rules is that um, for you to remember that when it comes to your clubhouse, you want to make sure that it's a protected place where maybe other thoughts are not allowed to come into it. So let me give you an idea where I'm talking about this. So it can be a place where maybe you need to just allow yourself to have a letdown, right? You ever get to the end of your day and you're just like, oh, I'm just gonna go oh, with people, right? And so maybe you need to make it so it's a sacred spot for yourself where you can just freak out, do whatever it is that you need to do. So um, I have known of many executives over the years who use the gym for this kind of a thing, right? So they sign up for boxing classes or they go and they hit the... <laughs> the boxing bag, right? Or they go run it out or they spin it out or they lift weights or whatever it is. And so then that way it, that gym time becomes that clubhouse time. And in that space, you don't let anybody else into it. And so that's where you might be listening to a podcast, right? You might be listening to some meditative music or some music that just kind of gets you out of your norm. And that's a cool thing about 
her little clubhouse here is that it's out of the norm. It is this different separated spot. Now, yes, it's here in her bedroom. In fact, it's right smack dab in the middle of the floor, right? So it's still her bedroom space, but it's, um, but it's, it's, it has its own little feel to it. Okay. And so, and she is allowing certain stuffed animals in there and other ones are not allowed in there. Right. So it's like, it's a very, very special, special spot. So the same thing for you is if you're going to have a clubhouse, you're going to designate that time, make it your own very special spot. Okay. That you only allow certain things into it. Or you might say, you know what? I don't want to have crazy things in my mind like the news and all the mania of what's going on. I'm going to use that special quiet time to just listen to, let's say, classical music because studies show it's very good for our brains. And so that's where I want you to make sure you're being very conscientious about this and making some choices about what you will or will not allow into your clubhouse, right? What are you going to let in the front door of your clubhouse? And so then you make those decisions instead of being in the moment and just like rushing, you're like, oh, I just need a break. And you have haven't thought about it in advance, right? So we'll have that intentionality to it. And then um, the, the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to the leadership clubhouse rules is to remember to encourage your people that they probably need a clubhouse too. And so at the office, you may or may not have like a break room or you may or may not have like a quiet space people can go to. Um, and that's okay. I remember reading up once about Google, how they have their sleeping pods and it was meant to be for people to go into. It's like this kind of quiet spot where they can like take 10, 15, 20 minute power nap. And it was like less than 1% of the people or something are, are actually using these sleeping pods. It was just the fact that they were there and that made a huge difference, right? So for, for people to have it, but what are people using, right? So more people need to have that ability to know that they can take a break. And I think that that was part of the problems that they realized is Google. It's like, hey, we've got these things, but people don't feel like they can take a break. So make sure for yourself that you're allowing for that happen. And maybe you even put in designated break time. Um, so for example, we have Friday free meetings, like, or yeah, Friday, no, <laughs> meeting free Fridays, if I could say it right, right? So it's this whole thing of, we're not doing meetings on Fridays. No, that's a day for you guys to get caught up. And if we can't, um, if we can't get it done Monday through Thursday with some kind of a team meeting, then it doesn't, then it's not happening on Friday and there's something else that's going on. So we need to look at it. So if you want to continue to position yourself to be that awesome tech leader that everyone wants to work for, encourage your people, right? Encourage them to have their own version of a clubhouse. And I'm not saying for them to create a club that is divisive from other people. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for them as an individual person, what is it that they need? So they have that chance to have that quiet place they can go to that has that sacred feeling of this is my place where I really want to get recharged, rejuvenated, to start my day well, or if I need a break or whatever, it's like, I've got a spot, right? So create that and encourage them to create it for themselves. Well, thank you, my friends, for joining me today. This has been really fun to be here and to, to be right here at my daughter's clubhouse. Da, da, da. It's so cute with all the fun, bright colors. And, um, and remember for yourself, you can do this as well. And as you do that, then you too can become the tech leader that everyone wants to work for. Because you know what, my friends? You deserve it. And so do your people. Thanks again. And we'll see you later.